and after countless attempts, you would imagine that people would realize that a physical retaliation may not be the solution. Yet here we are, thousands of years later with technology that can clone DNA, vehicles that can break the sound barrier and probe the depths of space, and science that can overcome almost any sickness. Yet we still fail to take notice to the importance of thoughts and consciousness. This is the very definition of insanity. And every single one of us is responsible for this psychic epidemic because we're killing the messenger and paying no attention to the message. During the 1990s, three Nobel laureates in medicine advanced research that revealed the primary function of DNA lies not in protein synthesis as widely believed for the past century, but in electromagnetic energy reception and transmission. Less than 3% of DNA's function involves protein manufacture. More than 90% functions in the realm of bioacoustic and bioelectric signaling. So why is it important to know that DNA functions in bioelectric signaling? HeartMath Institute has discovered the heart and brain maintain a continuous two-way dialogue, each influencing the other's functioning. Although it is not well known, the heart sends far more information to the brain than the brain sends to the heart. And the signals the heart sends to the brain can influence perception, emotional processing, and higher cognitive functions. The heart also generates the strongest rhythmic electromagnetic field in the body, and this actually can be measured in the brain waves of people around us. We are, quite literally, an electromagnetic expression of our highest cognitive function. The behavior of electromagnetism is evident throughout the world as dualism. All matter contains a negative and positive charge, which means organisms are built upon this foundation. The natural homeostasis of any organism is a balance of both polarities. Furthermore, research on emotional energetics shows that the heart's field is a carrier of emotional information and a mediator of bioelectromagnetic communication within and outside the body. Research shows our heart's field changes distinctly as we experience different emotions. It is registered in people's brains around us and apparently is capable of affecting cells water and DNA studied in vitro. Fear. The chemical supplied by a collective parasite creates a distinct bioelectric signal given off by the host. This signal is disseminated to the organisms within our community and will grow outward through the entire organism unless it is counterbalanced by an opposing force. Dr. Fritz Allen Pop discovered that the cells in our body communicate through biophotons which are tiny particles of light that are single units of an electromagnetic field. This communication system within our body also exists between people in what's known as morphic resonance. This was known by the shamans, sages, and adepts of antiquity. These teachings were commonplace in prehistoric cultures. It wasn't by sheer chance that artistic expression and rituals were the cornerstone of every ancient civilization. Art was used as a personal method to exercise the shadow content of the psyche and introduce it to the conscious mind. This was very literally viewed as psychic therapy. Ritual was based around astrological dates. As we've learned, the study of the stars and planets reflect our own astropsychology. The shamans would perform rituals on astrological dates that would correlate with a circadian rhythm or a psychological cycle. These rituals kept the human participants aware of their inner self and prevented the repression of psychological content. As long as people were facing their inner demons and accepting them as their own, they were not collectively projecting them into the physical world. If you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. The progeny of our psychological disease 
began growing rapidly after a series of catastrophes forced the collective into a somatic state of fight or flight. This lowered the immunity of the population by introducing a state of immense stress. Our body becomes more susceptible to illness under stress. In this manner, humanity fell ill when entire bodies of land were swallowed up by the floodwaters. This uprooted many tribes, chiefdoms, and civilizations from their homes, and their ritual practices that were used as a conduit for psychic wellness were put on hold in order to survive the catastrophe and seek new homes. The shamans were spread to many new areas of the world. This information has been suppressed. We are made to believe that advanced civilizations such as ancient Egypt and the Mayans of Mesoamerica came about with no prior rudimentary remnants or evidence of evolving intellectual artifacts to bring them to their peak. We are meant to believe that their incredible knowledge of mathematics, astrology, agriculture, economy, polity, and architecture came out of nowhere. This leads many researchers today to the understanding that the origins of these civilizations have been suppressed. Not surprisingly, the force that has guided the suppression of this knowledge comes from the exact bloodline of the political and religious leaders stated previously. These are some of the notable book burnings and suppression of important texts in our history. Yet after all of this suppression, there are still remnants of the dispersion of elder civilizations in nearly every country. There is tremendous evidence of ancient cultures visiting North America long before the conventional belief of European colonization. Barry Fell states in his book, America B.C., there are ancient inscriptions now being reported from nearly all parts of the United States, Canada, and Latin America, written in various European and Mediterranean languages in alphabets that date from 2,500 years ago. William Commonus Beaumont wrote, The Toltec and Maya civilizations never originated on American soil, but appeared there full-blown, with a well-defined art and system of hieroglyphic writing which possesses affinities with Egyptian. It is found that there are thousands of prehistoric sites across New England and several other northern states showing inscriptions, carvings, and mounds created by Druidic mariners as far back as 800 BC. To suppress this information further, it was not only imperative for the bloodline to burn the documented text containing true historical information but to wipe out the cultures that derived from these ancient shamans. The most devastating genocide ever endured was and still is the annihilation of shamanic tribes. We've lost our traditional roots and don't know about ritual. The dragon dances and the ghost dances of the Native American Indians, what do you think that was all about? All the shamans of the world, when they do their rituals, they're doing that. Their work, harmonically through dances, is to strengthen the immune system of the earth. You know, but they've been all murdered. So that was why in the 17th century, exactly the same period I'm talking about, there was an all-out agenda that when you come across indigenous people, you annihilate them. Columbus was sent on his expedition along with agents of the crown to disrupt the lives of the natives and seize mineral resources. He visited every island in the Caribbean, depleting the gold and taking as many slaves of the native Taino tribe as possible. Five million natives were murdered within three years, according to Leah Trabek. Within 15 years, the Arawak tribe of 250,000 was completely wiped out. The population of the United States prior to European contact was greater than 12 million. Four centuries later, the count was reduced by 95% to 237,000. From 1494 to 1508, over three million people had perished from war, slavery, and the mines. Who in future generations will believe this? I myself writing this as a knowledgeable eyewitness can hardly believe it. My eyes have seen these acts so foreign to human nature, and now I tremble as I write. Another agent of the false ego bloodline was Hernando Cortez, who decimated the Aztec tribe and plundered their mineral resources. This again was the case through Cortez's second cousin, Francisco Pizarro, who conquered the Incan Empire in Peru. These atrocities are seen throughout Africa, New Zealand, New Guinea, East Timor, and are still seen today in Canada. This was a deliberate attempt to bury any surviving remnants of the ancient world and our true history. 
It is a naive mistake, however, to categorize and blame everything and everyone involved with politics or religion for this suppression of knowledge. It is only natural for people to crave spiritual understanding when there are so many manufactured missing links and perversions in the spiritual text today. And due to this void of spiritual wisdom, honest and moral people who are simply trying to understand their place in this world become the prime consumer market for those who wish to exploit this vulnerability.